Hello crafty friends, it's Jess from JessCrafts.com and today I'm here with another Lawn Fawn Woodland Critter Huggers uh, modification. So I'm trying to make different critters with the Lawn Fawn set because the ones they include are super cute, but just to get more value out of the set, I decided to kind of play around and figure out what else I could make. I tried to make a wolf last time I shared and the wolf was pretty easy because a wolf and a fox are kind of similar animals and since it's designed to make a fox with some simple color modifications it easily made a wolf but today I'm going to make a tiger so here is my completed tiger and I started with an orange body I put a cream tummy and a orange feet I will also be using the same cream color for the snout. The snout that I am using is the stitched heart from the die set. I tried as much as possible when making my modified animals or and as I'm trying to you know, make some other ones to try to stick with what is included with the dies that are in the set as opposed to adding some other die cuts, which I think you know, you certainly can, but then if the person, uh, you know, like if the, you know, the crafter who's making it has a different die set than you, you can't mimic the same one. So I appreciate the people who are trying to kind of see what they can make just from what's included in this set. So his stripes are what was labeled by Lawn Fawn as a tail detail. And I just die cut a whole bunch of these. I think the tiger takes 12 stripes and I also use the ear detail to make two of the stripes. So at the very top of his head I will take the ear detail. So these little triangles that are meant to go inside of his ears and I'm going to add that as some additional stripes. You could do a few more stripes like this because the only thing with doing the tiger is he takes a lot. You know cutting out 12 stripes does take a while because there's only one of that die. So if you want to make the process a bit faster, there's a couple things you can do. One would be to simply die cut multiple pieces. And the way that you would do that is just to use, like to put two pieces of cardstock together and then send it through. And you'd cut out two at a time. I'm not personally as big of a fan of that because I'm trying to use some thicker, more quality cardstock just so they hold up a bit better. Thinner cardstock does work better for that sort of technique. Um, and you could also add like a pressure plate in to make that more possible. But also another time saver is to die cut them with adhesive already on the back. So I put Elizabeth Crafts tape on the back because that's what I have, but anything similar will do. And that saves time of having to apply all the liquid glue and then I can just kind of place my pieces down. So it's gonna be even harder to try to die cut them with adhesive and then two layers. But you can't cut all of the stripes with adhesive on the back because some stripes are facing the opposite direction. So this stripe, if I had cut it with adhesive on the back, it's facing the other way. I'm flipping it over. So you could then just put the adhesive down and die cut through the adhesive side and then that should work as you flip it over. So that's another strategy. Um, I find that it doesn't always cut all the way through as you can see, so I was a little wary of doing that. But I would certainly give that a try if you are looking for a time-saving technique. But I also think this is probably just one of those critters that I'm not going to mass produce. I might make a special striped tiger for a few people here and there, but I probably won't make like, I'm probably going to make uh, about 12 of these in all. And I'm going to make a lot of owls and I'm going to make a few of the wolves too because that modification was simple, but I don't think I'm going to make a dozen of the tiger. I was also thinking that when you make this, you could use this very similar technique to make any kind of cat. So a lot of cats that I've had in my lifetime 
have been tabby cats with stripes on them. So I thought this would be fun to make like a tabby cat too. You know, you could get cut a gray cat and with some darker gray stripes or black stripes uh, or an orange cat with orange stripes. Um, I always think of Newton from Newton's Nook Designs when I think of an orange tabby cat because he's an orange cat with orange stripes and I was on their design team for a long time. So sometimes I would color things to look like Newton. You also can save some time by die cutting a few things with one pass of the machine. So when you're cutting out a black stripe, you could also be cutting out some black eyes, the black nose, you know, make sure that you're not sending everything through one at a time and that will save you a bit. So I tried to decide where did I absolutely need to put the stripes in order for it to read as a tiger. And I felt like on the face, was definitely a spot, especially that little um, bit coming down that really reads tiger from, you know, like looking at all the different cartoon tigers out there, they all have that little stripe down the face. So I wanted to make sure to include that. Then I also felt like some stripes on his hands would be important, a little bit less so on the belly, just because a lot of the belly is covered. So I figured if I put it on the face, the arms and the tail, it would generally read like a tiger. Now, the only thing is, you have this kind of fluffy tail, and tigers don't have fluffy tails. They have a longer tail that's thinner, they you know use it for balance and all that, and so this fluffy tail is just not doing it, and I'm going to have to cut it down. You can, of course, just freehand or draw a little shape rather than even starting with the die cut. I chose to start with the die cut just to kind of show you it that way for people who might be a little bit less comfortable with the idea of freehand. Also, if you look at cartoon tigers, their tails tend to be rounded at the end because again, they are not fluffy. So I am going to round off my tiger's tail. Another suggestion for trying to keep things a bit quicker is to use the scraps. So when I turn this over, I'm going to be able to cut off the extra bit of stripe that's hanging over the edge. And you could use these bits for some of the stripes rather than using a whole stripe each time. But I will say that the um, whole stripes read as very tigery because they come to a point. And if you look at cartoon tigers and real tigers, their stripes tend to come to a point. And that's why I chose to, you know, for these special few, really go all out and make my tiger look you know, completely accurate. Although a lot of tigers have the black on the tail, so you could kind of put a little scrap piece on the end and trim it out to get that little last tail piece since it doesn't come to the same point. And I do want to try to keep this video a little bit quicker. So since I do have a tiger made, I think at a certain point you can kind of just see what I did. Then I'm going to attach it there. I'm going to put a few more stripes here on the tail. I'm going to use the pointy part of the stripes. I am going to use the, again, pointy stripes to create the stripes on his arms. I just know that some of them need to be facing in the opposite direction. If you look at tigers, some of their stripes are facing one way and some are facing the other. Like they're kind of symmetrical. So if these ones are facing out towards the end of, edge of his body, they're going to do the same thing on the other side, like a mirror image. So you'll want to use the mirror image of the die cut. So these stripes, I'll use mine without adhesive, and the other side, I'll use the ones with adhesive. And then I'll be ready to add in a little treat for someone special, and I can tack down the paws. So, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're interested in more crafting tutorials, be sure to subscribe to my channel. If you have any other animals you'd like to see done with the Lawn Fun Woodland Critters die set, please let me know. I'm going to try to play around with it more just again. I want to get good value out of it, but I also want to share with you the critters I come up with so you can continue to get good value out of it as well. I will leave you links to the Critter Huggers and other products in the video description below. Thank you so much for watching. Have an awesome day. Bye.